beloved of God, it's Monday, October 24th, the 30th week in ordinary time. And I pray that you are still bathed in the glow of Sunday worship. How great is it that we get a chance to be in worship with all of our brothers and sisters, the whole communion of saints, if you will, and communion of potential saints. I'm Father Michael, along with the rest of the team, welcoming you to the God Minute. Thanks for joining us in prayer today. Let us begin as we do all things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and and my mouth mouth shall shall declare declare your your praise. praise. Psalm 103, the Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. Be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Several years ago, when I was substitute teaching for a group of first graders, one of the particularly mischievous boys didn't return after recess. When I inquired about his whereabouts, his classmates told me that he was in the office. Due to his track record, I wasn't totally surprised by that, but I was surprised as to why he was in the office. As it turns out, one of his friends was hurt on the playground, and so he accompanied him to the nurse. I poked my head in the hallway to see him dawdling as he returned to class. And when I asked him what he was doing and why he had gone to the office, he said it was because his friend was hurt. And I said, well, what did you need to go for? And he responded, I was giving him comfort. How could I argue with that? In today's reading from St. Paul, he offers us rules for new life, which are really quite simple. And he does this inviting us to be imitators of God as beloved children. The thing about children is that they don't overcomplicate things. Being kind and compassionate and forgiving are almost second nature to them. Children also realize that so much of their lives is rooted in relationship. Because of their dependence and their need, they have to turn to others for help. It's often said that rules without relationship lead to rebellion. I know that to be the case for my life for sure. So as St. Paul is inviting us to live this new kind of life of kindness and compassion and forgiveness, he's telling us that we don't have to do it alone and that by keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, who does this most perfectly in his offering to the Father, we will have the strength and the courage and the faithfulness to be able to do so ourselves. To live in a childlike simplicity that allows us to live these rules for new life, keep us honest in the same way that kids keep us honest and call us on our stuff when they see it. So what does it mean to be kind? To be kind is to have an awareness and a consideration for others and to be generous in the way that we treat others. To be compassionate is to learn how to suffer with 
to keep our eyes off of ourselves, but to enter into the suffering of another and to be with them and simply accompany them in the midst of their pain. But I think for all of us, kindness and compassion are not the difficulty. Forgiveness tends to be the most difficult of things for us. The word forgive comes from the Latin perdonare, which means to give completely and without reservation. So when we practice kindness and compassion in smaller levels, it prepares us to be able to forgive, especially when it comes to bigger things. There's certainly a generosity involved in forgiveness because it's undeserving. And this kind of giving is not easy, but it is possible. Again, Jesus himself shows us what this looks like when he stretches out his arms on the cross and he says, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. I've often used that as a model when I've had difficulty forgiving someone to recognize that on my own strength, I don't have the power to forgive them. But to ask Jesus to forgive them in me brings about a new healing and a new freedom in my own life as I set someone free from grudges that I've held on to due to the pain and suffering that they may have caused or the ways that they might have harmed me. And so the invitation today from St. Paul is to truly live this new life. Just like children watch and imitate everything, for good or for ill, we are also invited to watch and imitate Jesus as he lived, as he loved, as he died, as he forgave, as he encountered each person he met with kindness and with compassion, and how he was quick to forgive even those who put him to death. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And so we pray, Jesus, help us to live a new life in you and with you. Give us the grace of your Holy Spirit to continually instruct our hearts in power so that the sacrifice of our lives may be as pleasing to the Father as your gift of self was on the cross. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, before we conclude today, let me just remind you that today is the final day to submit the names and the photographs of your loved ones who have passed away in the last year for us to remember at the All Souls Day Mass on Wednesday, November the 2nd. Thanks so much for joining us today in prayer. Do take good care of yourself and one another, and we'll see you tomorrow.